Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve this puzzle from the Sudoku Grand Prix using pointing pairs. The last time I used them is when it gets a little tricky. You do need to watch to that point if you want to solve this puzzle. Click below if you want to give it a go. With that, it's solving time. The first thing you might notice is you got these two ones here, rows five and six, in this row in column nine. So you can solve for one right here. That's just a uh, hidden single doing a little bit of cross hatching here. You will be able to get some cross hatching results. You got these two sixes in rows one and two, this six down in column one, so you can solve for a six right there in uh, block one. And then look for the fours, all right? You got these two fours in columns eight, nine, this four cutting across. So you can solve for a four here in block nine. Uh, then look over with these two fours and the four coming down column one. You can solve for four right here. Uh, cut across with this row four in row six. You can solve for a four in block four. Then you can also solve up here in block two. Hopefully you see these two fours and the four right there. And the last four is going to be right here. So initially starting out, you know, I felt pretty good. I did solve this puzzle before. I participated in a round four and it was it was fun. It was from the UK hosted. There's a lot of quality setters from the UK and I'll feature, I've featured some of those before and I'll let you know about them in the description below. But I'll tell you this puzzle gets a little bit harder than a normal puzzle one. Normal puzzle ones, it's all just cross hatching. Usually uh, this one has a little bit more to it. That's why I wanted to show you how to solve this puzzle. Now let's look for the sevens. You got uh, this, actually this seven kind of cross row three, this seven up and now you can solve for seven up here in block two and then look for the sixes here in block four because you got these two sixes you have this six cutting across that means there has to be one place for a six there in block four and then we can start focusing on the fives this is kind of nice you got this five cutting down column eight this five cutting across only points for the place left for a five the fours they kind of did a lot of good blocking for us. Now with these two fives and this five, we can solve for a five right here. And then with these two fives in row seven, eight, and this five cutting down column four, you can solve for a five right there. And now you're looking up here in block four. You got this five right here. You got this five cutting across. Only one place for a five in block four. And then you got one place up for five in block one. All right, last five is here in block five. Anytime you have four fives or four of any cannon going into a block, you know you can solve it, even though there doesn't seem to be a lot of cannons in there. So we got rid of all the fives. And then you want to see that you can actually solve for seven now here in block four. And then you're going to also, uh, what you have to do is shift your focus a little bit if you want to solve the next seven, because it's not going to be cross hatching. Um, actually, what I, what I noticed is that this cell couldn't contain a 7, this cell can contain a 7, so this cell had to be a 7. So I, I kind of went across row 4 there. Uh, if you did do the cross action, you could notice that there's only one place for a 7 here in block 5. But I thought that was kind of cool to show you that. I wanted to kind of point that out. And, and if you like to see some of these cool tips, tricks, and strategies, subscribe to some more hobbies, and I will give you more of those. Okay, next thing we can do with the seven, since you get the seven right here, and you got the two sevens in rows one and three, you can solve for seven right there. So we're getting to the pointing pair. It's coming up really soon, okay? Uh, you got these two sevens here in column eight and nine, and you got that seven. All right, so now that we've gotten these sevens, uh, we want to focus on the ones. Our first pointing pair is going to come from the ones. So you got these two ones in columns eight and nine, you can solve for one up here in block three. Now, what you see here is you got this one cutting across row one this one coming up column three so there's only two places for one here in block one and so that is a called a pointing pair there's two spots and they're in the same column so basically they're locked candidates lock candidates mean they are in two houses so they're in block one and they're also in column one all right there's two of them it's a pointing pair i'll highlight that and make it green what does that mean it means that a one has to be somewhere in block one but it's limited to the same column it means a one can't be anywhere else along column one because if there's a one down here you would not have a place to put a one here in block one so we know you can't have any ones in either of those two spots well since we can't have any of those uh, ones in those two spots you have this one here in column three and this one cutting across there's only one place now left for a one in block seven so you can solve this cell for a one this is great stuff 
because what it does is it allows us to actually solve all the other ones in this puzzle. Because these two ones right here, this one in column five, we can solve for one in block eight. And now with the column six, column five ones, you can solve for one here, and which eliminates this one. Anytime you displace a Snyder mark, uh, and when I do with the pointing pairs, is a Snyder mark, you know you can solve the other cell immediately. All right, so I'll get rid of the colors there, and I wanted to show you that's that first pointing pair. You do need at least two pointing pairs to solve this puzzle. So the second one's a little trickier. Like I said, you want to keep watching. And something else to notice is I felt this puzzle was a little bit harder than normal puzzle ones from around. And in fact, I'll put a link to another video at the end that you want to check out from a different uh, puzzle one from a different round of Soku Grand Prix. And you can kind of compare which one you think is harder. But what we need to do is shift gears a little bit. You're not going to make a lot of progress unless you find this next step. Uh, what's really cool is you actually want to notice that you have a limitation here in this cell, right? You got only two cannons remaining, a three and an eight. Okay, and that's good. But what it leads to, and what's more important, is that these two cells now are limited to a two and a nine. And one cool fact that a naked pair like a two and a nine or a hidden pair acts also as a pointing pair. So you know that I can show that this two or nine now can't be anywhere else along row five. Okay, that's gonna come in real handy here right now because I'm gonna show you the next pointing pair, the important one that you need to see. It has to do with the six. You notice that there's a six coming down column four. Well, it leaves two places left for a six here in block eight. And I'm actually gonna highlight I want to highlight these because this is going to come back into play. Okay, so we have another pointing pair, right? Sixes can't be, uh, they have to be somewhere here in block eight, but they can't, but they also have to be in column five. So six can't be anywhere else along column five. What does that do to this block right here? It means no sixes here. And with this six, a six can't be here. And with these two sixes, six can't be here or here. And so now we know we can solve this cell for a six. Okay, and that's huge, that's really helpful for us. But now, this in conjunction with our little naked pair there is gonna help us solve the rest of column six. And this is beautiful, all right? Because what do you need right here? You need a two, three, and a nine, right? That's what's missing from column six. But we have the two and the nine right there. They act as like pointing pairs, right? So we know this can't be a two or a nine, this has to be a three. And so we can solve that for three. And this is beautiful. You do need to find this if you want to be able to solve the rest of this puzzle. And if you like these neat tricks like pointing pairs, hidden and naked pairs, then you want to download my solving guide. It's absolutely free. Click on the pinned comment below and you can solve Sudoku even better. All right, let's get rid of the colors here. And we can get rid of those pairs because we don't need any more. And now with this three, you'll probably notice right away, we can solve this for an eight and solve this for a three. With these two threes, we can solve this cell for a three, which leaves a full house. And so there's only one cell remaining. That means that it has to be a two. And then you notice there's only one cell remaining here now, and we don't have a two. So that has to be your two right there. And so we're going to be able to make a lot more good solves here. All right. And now you don't have any twos there. Here's a two. So all this for a two, got this three. So here's your three and here is your nine. And let's keep following the twos here. We got twos in rows one and two, and Gene, this has to be a two. So the fastest way to get to a solve once you get to the hard part is always go back and see what does this give you and go back to cross-hatching. Cross-hatching is the fastest way to get cells in a puzzle, especially when you have most of the cells filled out, you wanna look for this first. So with these two twos in columns one and two, means there has to be a two right there. And now with this two coming down column five, it has to be a two here. Only one place left for two in block nine. And so now we know this is a nine, that is a two. And so we got all the two solved. This is great stuff for us. And now let's look at the threes, right? You can't have a three in any of these spots. So this has to be your three. This leaves an eight or nine. Always wanna look for the big restrictions there. I see a nine right there. So I'm just gonna clean this up and put that nine in the eight. And now we're gonna do like some pretty good little clumping here, right? Cause we know we have eight cells filled out in rows one, two, and three. So we can we know we're gonna be able to solve all three of these cells. And what we're missing is looks like a three, eight, and a nine. Well, my great trick here, I see an eight, nine here, and I see an eight repeater right here. It means I can solve all three of the cells pretty easily, right? I know this has to be the three because the eight's in row 
three, that's the nine, and this is the eight. And so if you can kind of see that as you're scanning across, you can knock out all three of those right away. And now we notice there's nine, eight, and column nine. So that has to be your eight. And we need, looks like a three and a six. I got my six right here. So here's your six, here's your three. And then whenever we solve this and we just place a Snyder mark, we know we can solve that cell immediately. And then I'm gonna go right up here and go, okay, I don't see an eight across row seven. I don't see an eight now here in block eight and because of that eight, I knew it had to be down here in row nine. And so I have another full house right here. That has to be your nine. I don't have an eight or nine up there. So that's gotta be your nine. That's gotta be your eight. And so we have two cells remaining here. Uh, another full house. I'm looking for a three and I'm looking for a nine. So always kind of, I look in the block because that's the easiest place to look. Say, so what are my two? And then I'll take my peripheral and go, what is missing? All right. The nine's got to be down there and this has to be your three. You need to watch this other video and see which puzzle one was harder for you. Thank you so much for watching.